third area we talked about was spirituality and aesthetics. Because after all, if we are human beings, we are not only rational computers. We have feelings, we have emotions, we have an equal we call inspiration. There was some debate every time we talked about this over the word spirituality. Because some people like the word spirituality, and some people have an allergy to the word spirituality. Because it sounds like spiritualism, or talking to the spirit world, just feels foreign to a humanistic perspective. Uh, but for other people, it means inspiration. It means uplifting the human spirit. You know, sing it with spirit. It doesn't mean with a ghost. It means with joy, with enthusiasm, with your full being. And so you can talk about experiences of beauty. Experiences of feeling part of something larger than yourself, whether it's a, a protest march for a cause, or it's, as, a, as I described um, earlier in the weekend, if you touch, you go to an archaeological site and touch the stones, where you know, people have touched these stones for thousands of years. Or you see, my other favorite example of this is in the cave paintings in Europe. Someone took a reed full of paint, and they put their hand on the wall, and they went and blew the paint around their hand. And all we have left is their handprint on the wall. There's no written language, but that's someone saying, I was here. One of our ancestors put their hand on the wall. In fact, some uh, scientists have speculated it was a woman who did it based on the shape of the hand and the knuckles and whatever they can discover from what's left of that image. Regardless of which gender it is, it's someone saying, I was here. It's beautiful even more so than the bulls and the hunt scenes and whatever else they depicted, uh, because it's quintessentially human. Uh, if it wouldn't ruin the painting, you can put your hand up there and check yourself against it. Um, that's that kind of emotional transcendence that human beings need regardless of religion. And some people used to get it from religious settings. They would go to a church and hear a beautiful choir. They would hear the fantastic stories of miracles and wonders of a God who dies and, uh, and who still loves you in a Christian setting. Uh, or of a God who gave you a covenant that you can still participate in centuries later in the Jewish setting. Uh, they would feel that transcendence, that emotional uplift in a religious context. We still have those emotional human needs, but we have to find ways to meet them that fit with our approach to life. So when we ask where do you find spiritual or emotional experiences, they're going to be the kind of examples that we uh, talked about just now, um, or that we talked about over the weekend. Uh, all of us have those experiences, whether or not we call them spiritual. Uh, so if somebody asks you, well, if you're just you know, interested in science and reason, then you must not care about spirituality or emotion or anything. Absolutely not. If we're meeting human needs, we have to meet those needs too. And uh, emotions are very deeply rooted in you. On the question of truth, uh, yes? I was just going to say, that seems to be a good juncture where you could a uh, answer a question with a question. You sort of put that down, but I instinctively, you know, resisted that from having taught for so many years. Yeah, I know. Because so, so um, you know, you can find out that maybe even got you know what you say. It's all in the tone, you know, how you ask the question. That's right. But you could, might find out that, but by God, they don't mean they mean something that's uh, more more compatible with with your, so. with your views and, and spirituality certainly. Right, absolutely. So it may be worth saying to them, um, as you know, I mentioned one of our rabbis visited my community and had a discussion on this, and he asked people who liked the word spirituality what for them was a spiritual experience. And when they listed these kind of experiences, exposure to nature, uh, you know, a beautiful rainbow or a sunrise, uh, the birth of a grandchild, uh, well the people who didn't like the word spirituality had those experiences too. Yeah. So that's where it is worth sometimes asking a question to clarify because often the answer will <coughs> highlight what's different. So I, I mentioned the example um, earlier in the weekend when I talk to people about uh, how we do what's Jewish, I'll ask them, what's Jewish about Jewish food? Hmm. And they'll say things like, my grandmother made it, uh, we eat it at holiday time, uh, there's family recipes that are passed down. Um, and very rarely do you get to, it follows Jewish dietary laws. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> most Jewish delis don't follow Jewish dietary laws, but it's clearly Jewish food in these Jewish delis. Um, so the ritual religious side of it is less important than the cultural family historical side. And the same thing is true with another question I'll ask when I'm talking about the humanism side. If someone is sick that you know and care about, what are some things you would do to help them? And you'll often get call a doctor, <laughs> take them to the hospital, maybe make them chicken soup, which is part of the 
you would food connection to. Um, you would talk to them to uplift their spirits. Uh, you would make sure they have a fully stocked pantry. You know, there's things you could do. And very far down the list is pray. <laughs> because for most people, that's not the first thing they think of. Yeah. They think of, what can I do in this circumstance? Um, so that, that is a case where asking, asking questions can help. And the spirituality one in particular is open for dialogue. Now, some people, when they say spirituality, they do mean the spirit world and spiritualism and supernatural. That's, they're entitled to use it that way and to mean that by it. But they may not find as comfortable a home in the humanistic community as someone else. I also mentioned the statistic in a very fascinating study that showed that people who live closer to nat uh, national parks tend to have lower rates of religious affiliation because they get that emotional, spiritual fix from the natural experience. They don't have to go to church or synagogue.